And I think he still has so much work to do for himself and he has so much work to do, um, you know, to, to realize that he's not the person he thought he was, or he wants other people to think he is. Mm -hmm. And that will he be able to have a successful relationship with somebody if he's still trying to learn him to love himself? Like, I feel like he needs to like watch one episode of RuPaul's Drag Race and it's going right. to <laughs> No, I think so too. What's up everyone? Tanya here with popculture.com. And I'm so excited to welcome actor, producer, and the Critics' Choice nominated Brandon Scott Jones, whose new movie, Senior Year, which he wrote and stars in, is out this Friday on Netflix. Brandon, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Firstly, congrats on everything. You've had such an amazing year leading with Ghosts, which is on CBS and Paramount Plus right now. Uh, you've earned, you know, the first of many nominations for the show. How are you feeling knowing this show is so well loved and everyone just can't get enough of it? Oh, wow. Um, it's great. It's such a great feeling, truly. Um, I, you know, you, you, we didn't know what to expect. We didn't know how people are going to, uh, if they were going to enjoy it or not. And the fact that like, I think people found it and they keep coming back really means a lot. Um, but it also the best part is honestly, selfishly is that it means we get to do more of them. And I really love my cast and I love the people I get to work with every day. And so um, we're all, we literally were just texting like five seconds ago, seeing each other. And we're all how excited we are to see each other in New York coming up. So yeah. I'm very, very pumped about that. Yeah, for sure. And I know that there's so much more coming with those. You guys are going to be shooting this month in this, you know, next month in Montreal, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to talk to you about senior year, which you wrote and you star in. It is so funny. Uh, I was <laughs> laughing out loud. I watched this with my sister. You know, it's such an interesting and different sort of like, you know, comedy for like, it goes, it throws, it's a nice throwback to like the old comedies from the 2000s, like the yeah. teenage movies. Um, and it has like such a funny spin. So what it really attracted you to this story, because I know you co-wrote it with, you know, based off a of spec and then you star in it and you're very funny as Mr. Tapper. <laughs> Mr. Oh, Tapper. thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I, I think what, what the thing that attracted to me, uh, attracted me to it is, um, the thing that attracted me to it was the kind of what you said is that it was a throwback to those movies. And when I got the script, so it had already been written and I think had been in development in other places. And by the time that I got it, Rebel had attached to it and Todd Garner, who was the producer, was on it as well, trying to get it made. And I did a movie with the two of them a few years ago called Isn't It Romantic? And Rebel and I stayed in contact and she and I have a lot of very similar background. We have a very similar background in terms of like writing for ourselves and performing live comedy. And so I think we always talked about that. And um, she recommended me for this. And the second I got it, I like freaked out because I grew up on teen movies. I grew up watching everything. I mean, like I'm talking like from Greece and Clueless, but then all the way up to like, she's all that can't hardly wait, you know, never been kissed sort of. And like, I love that era so, so deeply. And that this movie got to be that and this modern world. I think I was like, oh, how delicious of an idea to yeah. wake up in today, like basically go into a coma, having gone into high school and she's all that, or 10 yeah. things I hate about you. And you go back to high school and it's euphoria. You know what I mean? Like what, like, Mm -hmm. like, what leap is that? And um, it was really, really fun to get to revisit that. I also went back into therapy because of it. It was so strange. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's there's a lot to like build. High school was crazy for a lot of us, especially during that time, the millennium. Like it was just a lot was a lot was happening with like the times and it's just I can oh. imagine. A hundred percent. I think that's what it was. It was sort of like, you know, you try to, oh, you always think that that's in like your rear, view, your rear view mirror. And then all of a sudden, you know, I get this project and I'm thinking and calling old high school friends and like finding people on Instagram and being like, hey, do you guys have the yearbook? Do you remember the And Like just slowly going down memory lane. I remember mm -hmm. I sent the production designer like a, um, a picture of my bedroom growing up. And I know that they use that as part inspiration for Stephanie's bedroom. And so it was a very like for the silliness of that the movie actually is I it became very, almost like too personal <laughs> yeah I love it I, there was a scene I'm like I don't want to spoil but there's that scene you know where Chris Parnell he opens the uh, oh she opens the closet and all the magazines fall out that's like yeah. how it was I think for us like I don't know if you ever ordered teen people like yeah. day 14 yeah. Yes, right. Day 14 magazine, Teen People, Teen Bo Yeah, all of that. All of um, wait, do you want to hear you want to hear a fun little uh, yes. scoop? Of course. Uh, <laughs> that joke of mm. all the magazines falling out. <clears throat> 
is uh, you, you, Darcy Carden, who played Janet on The Good Place, pitched that joke to me when I was telling her I was writing it. And we were just like joking around about things. And she pitched that joke. And I was like, that's so, so funny. So credit where credit is due. Yeah, it was very funny. It was so cute. You know, and Rebel Wilson is amazing in this. And I know you guys, you did talk about is not romantic? It was so funny. Your relationship in that movie also was hilarious. Um, what's it like working with someone like her who's so daring both physically and emotionally with the material? Oh, um, I mean, it's awesome. She's been such like, she's a real mentor to me in a lot of ways. And she's been such a champion of me. Um, and I really look up to her. Um, I, she's so smart. And I think that's the thing that uh, people sometimes, when you when you do big physical comedy or you play large characters like the way she does, I think we forget how much she's thinking and how much she's thinking ahead. And if I wish I could like photograph her script because like she would come into work and you would just see all the work that she's doing and she's writing ideas down, writing beats, writing out things that she wants to try. And um, it's very inspiring. It's very, very inspiring to see somebody at her level and who's been at that high level for so long continue to work that hard and to, to work that way and um, to be so good at it and yeah. make it look so effortless. Yeah. And then to be a great dancer too. Yeah. And I, again, I don't want to spoil, but there's that scene when you guys first meet, I yeah. was laughing so hard at that because it was so <laughs> awkward. Like you didn't know what she was talking about and she was still going into it and you were like, sure, I'll do it. And it's like, sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely hard to keep a straight face with her sometimes. Yeah. She's so good about not breaking too. Like yeah. she is just <laughs> very, very good. I can imagine. And you know, I'm not going to spoil it again because there's so much to talk about this movie. I don't want to spoil it because it's so much fun. <laughs> but um, the dance numbers were amazing. And I know she teased, you know, like a photo last summer and we were like, what is this? Um, you know, that dance sequence, was it written into the movie and was it always going to be that song? Oh, God, great question. Yes and yes. Okay. And <laughs> it was that song specifically. I, you know, I'm going to say it just so we can talk okay. about it. Okay. All right. So crazy, uh, Drive Me Crazy by Britney Spears, the stop remix, mm -hmm. specifically the stop remix was written into the script. Uh -huh. um, that song, that video is so yeah. iconic and is such a of that time period thing mm -hmm. that I remember. Um, and Britney rules. And I think she's such a good, it, she's almost sort of like this, um, and I don't want to be one of those people that are just talking about Britney Spears willy nilly, <laughs> but I feel like she's sort of like a good mascot for this movie of like, yeah. that was her then. And then here's what the world is now. And there's yeah. some, and so I really w wanted to celebrate that. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I wrote that specifically that song and, mm -hmm. uh, I remember very much the um, making of the video as well that MTV aired yeah. and Darren from Darren's dance groove, like choreographing it. And there's just, and that was for a movie called um, not called, it was called um, in Melissa John Hart in the making of the video says it's down to you, but down to you became a Freddie Prince Jr. movie. Yeah. And it, it was um, her and Adrian Grenier and I'm forgetting the name of it, but they were in, I was just like, it was a very specific thing that I really wanted to just highlight. Oh, it's perfect. It's done so well. <laughs> like I was yeah. like, oh, oh my God, you. it's like jaw dropping. It was amazing. Um, you know, there's this funny thing there's in the movie, there is this interesting social construct to the idea of perfectionism that kind of flows throughout the movie. And I'm wondering, what do you think it is about this theme that makes it so profoundly relatable, even like years later? And it's so refreshingly done though in this one. Oh, thank you. And you said perfectionism or sorry, yeah. what was perfectionism? The... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think what makes it well, I think what makes it relatable is I think this idea that you fit into a box, at least when we were younger yeah. and uh, people who graduated high school around like the early aughts, maybe have an idea of what we were supposed to be. Like the guy was supposed to be, you know, like the cargo short, like the puka shell or whatever. <laughs> and right. like the girl with the bleach blonde hair and the tan. Mm -hmm. And there was just this, um, it was, it was even more pervasive than it is now, I find. Um, and I think that we all felt this pressure from magazines and from the media to sort of like live up to that MTV expectation, that like early 2000s MTV expectation. And what I think is so nice about it is that I wanted to look at like how much we've changed and what, 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 there's things about high school that will never change, right? But there's things that as the, the culture of children get older and the new generation comes, like their mindsets change. And I really wanted to sort of like mm -hmm. uh, highlight both of those, that yeah. the idea that 
this younger generation, the things that we would have said, the things that we would have made fun of for people, they don't tolerate that anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, or I think the movement and the, the, the desire there is towards an acceptance that we didn't necessarily feel. And maybe I'm just like, kind of like, showing my wounds from my own experience, but I feel like a lot of people have those wounds, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I get it. um, I I really wanted the movie to be a a positive message that ultimately back then was about fitting in and now is about standing out and how this new generation, I want to celebrate that because I think the the young cast that I met on this movie are incredible, incredible people. They changed my life. They changed so many things. They gave me so much hope. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just really, I don't know. It's, I don't mean to blow something out for a silly <laughs> movie, but that's the way oh, it goes. It's, ama- it's an amazing message. Like that is something that I was so enamored by when I was watching and I was like, there are, they have been changes. Like we've all sort of grown up with these changes. Now we're looking at it. We're looking at the world in different eyes. And it's, it's very important because we need to be more inclusive and representative of, you know, everyone, because it's important to see, you know, people that look like us on TV and in movies. And that's exactly what we want to see in real life. Right. Cause exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you know, yeah. And for sure. And now, you know, just shifting back to ghosts a little, um, yeah. I loved the season one finale. It was so sweet. You and Nigel are adorable. Yeah. Um, you know, what did that moment mean for you as an actor getting to tell Isaac's story with Nigel now, especially going into season two? Oh, yeah, um, good question. <laughs> it was really important. I think the thing that it meant, it was cathartic, mm-hmm. right? It was really cool. Um, I'm happy that he got there too, because I think that we could have left it and then he starts next season in the same place. But I feel like we left him with an idea of like, well, now what, where, where does he go from here? Mm -hmm. And the thing that I found really personal about it and the thing that I'm really excited about is that for a lot of people, and I'm speaking from my own experience too, um, coming out is not a light switch. It's not a before and an after it's this gradient. It's this thing that kind of goes on. And I think he still has so much work to do for himself and he has so much work to do. Um, you know, to, to realize that he's not the person he thought he was, or he wants other people to think he is. Mm -hmm. And that will he be able to have a successful relationship with somebody if he's still trying to learn him to love himself? Like, I feel like he needs to like watch one episode of RuPaul's Drag Race and it's going to be (laughs) <laughs> no, I, think so too. I think so too like it's just it's one of those things I think we were talking about it like earlier in the season like you know I w- we were both kind of contemplating that maybe he yeah. hasn't really moved on because he hasn't been expressive enough but like now that he is like what is the next step for him like what does he have to do to get yeah. as Trevor says sucked off <laughs> so exactly yeah. yeah it's like it's, it's this interesting thing it's a, like you know he's now maybe going to experience like what real love is for the first mm-hmm. time and or at least more of, I'm sure he loved his wife back in the day, but I think this is going to be something new for him, but maybe Mm -hmm. that can sort of turn inward a little bit too, which I think could be kind of, kind of fun. And you bring up the wife. I I really hope in season two, we get to see more of that backstory because I want to know, like, we'll have great guest stars. I'm sure we will. Oh yeah. I have it in my brain who I, I, I would want. So I hope we get to see Isaac and his wife or Isaac back when he was in like the revolutionary times. I think that'd be really fun. That'd be so great. You know, um, we did see Alberta in the episode at a girl. She sort of had a power. And I'm wondering, do you think maybe now that, you know, um, Isaac's been a little bit more expressive with himself that we, he might have another power? Because I can't imagine your character like stinking up the place. Because, <laughs> you know, it's, not it's so tragic, isn't it? it I know. Is. <laughs> I wonder what it could be. I That's the thing. If it wasn't that, it's almost like I remember when I first read that, I was like, oh, God. And then now <laughs> it's like the most iconic thing that I always think about. Like we joke about it off screen, too. Mm-hmm. Um, that that's the only thing that my character can do this like very proud man um, <laughs> right really uh, it has just makes things sm- smell like a fart um, <laughs> but I wonder I wonder what what, what I wonder what it could be like yeah. this power that I would love that that would be really interesting that would be great I think it'd be so fun to see like everybody sort of just building off because there's been so many layers that have been peeled back now so I'm excited to see what happens. Um, you know, you do have such an amazing relationship with the ghost cast, but you know, sadly, you are the subject of many pranks and injuries. <laughs> I know that Richie has been constantly scaring you, and I think Asher broke your finger. So Asher broke my finger. Yeah, Asher yeah, broke my finger. Can't be no. a hand model anymore, right? Like that's no, kinda... can't be. I had a I had a career going too. Yeah, like that was I was so close. My Don Dish Up campaign was right about the. <laughs> Right. Have you thought about getting back at your co-stars? And like, also, like, why are you a target? (laughs) I don't know. I mean, it's probably something I need to take like a hard look in the mirror. Right. And I'm like, oh, they're so funny. But then I'm like, wait a second. I am the target of all these. Um, I don't know. It's a good. I do want to get them back. I feel like 
I'm actually, I think I'm going to try to like the long con, like the long game, right? With okay. Richie. And like really just slowly start to plant some seeds this year. I don't know exactly what, but I feel like whatever it is, I want it to pay off in season five and it'll be <laughs> thrilling. Um, right. But yeah, I, I just did the talk too. And they scared me on the talk because it's really starting a trend. And I poor know. Richie was... Richie was so sweet. He like texted me and he was like, I'm ruining your life. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I cannot imagine. That's so funny. But you guys are amazing. And, you know, I'm having so much fun with you. But before I do let you go, I, I want to ask you about Renfield and if there's anything you can tease us about your character and what we can expect from the movie. Because I've seen the pictures of Nicolas Cage. It's like yeah. amazing. <laughs> so. Oh, wow. Ooh, interesting. Um, I, I will say, here's what I'll tease you. I was like, I when I was on set mm-hmm. and we were there and we were filming, um, Nicholas Cage and Nicholas Hall are so good in this uh-huh. movie. They are going to be so, so dynamic together. And um, honestly, like Nicholas Cage's Dracula is like legit crazy. Yeah. And I'm really <laughs> pumped for it. I think it'll be really, 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 really fun. Do we know um, I wish I could say anything more about it, but I'm not too sure what I'm allowed to say. Okay. Well, do we know when it's going to be coming out? Like, is it coming out for the fall maybe or? Like, It'll be out in theaters, I think, April 14th. April 14th. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess a year. In about a year. A year. Okay, so we have to wait a little bit more. But, um, you know, a little bit more, but it'll be worth the wait, I think. It will be. Brandon, thank you. Thank, thank you so much for your time. You are such a gem of a person, and I just appreciate the chat so much. So, guys, from... Of course. Thing about you. Sorry. Oh, God. You. So for more of Brandon and all his projects, including Ghost, which is now available to stream on Paramount Plus, keep a lock to popculture.com for the latest.